Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday night service. Stand with me and sing, My Sins Are Blotted Out, I Know. tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the missionary that's here that's going to be presenting the message tonight. Lord, help him as he does so and shares his ministry with us. Lord, I pray for those who uh, have issues, Lord, tonight and help them as they are uh, dealing with those, Lord. You know the, the needs, Lord, and you know, uh, Lord, the way and, and how to take care of things. And I thank you for your watch care over us and the way that you take care of us day by day and lead us along this, these paths that we go. And I thank you for all that you do for us and our salvation. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Brother Bob. All right, I'm here to do the announcements. Um, so anyway, uh, James and Lori Bradley are missionaries to Mexico, the missionaries of the month. October is Pastor Appreciation Month, so uh, Pastor has, if you'd like to do something, you might consider adding to the Mission Trip to Israel Fund. October 31st at 4 uh, to 6 p.m., join us for a time of fellowship and fun. Please sign up and bring something for dinner and bring a bag of candy to pass out to our kiddos. Um, then we have, uh, let's see, do we have anything else? Pumpkin patch, pumpkin patch. Where is the, what day? The Bible club's going, oh, I see it, uh, to the pumpkin patch on October 24th at 10 a.m. is what we have here. So it says, uh, it's $10 per person and please bring a sack lunch. All right. Anybody have any other announcements? All right, well then let me, uh, I'd like to introduce um, Justin, uh, our missionary to the Navajo Indians. He's uh, here without his wife today because she, she's at she's at home right now. And um, we'd like you to come up and preach whatever God has uh, put on your heart. Good evening, it's good to be here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and show our video and uh, It'll show you a lot from our vacation Bible schools. Each summer we have a vacation Bible school. This past summer we weren't able to do that. And uh, there we see a lot of kids get saved and even some adults. 
And um, uh, COVID has really uh, came across the reservation, and a lot of people are afraid of it. And our numbers, our attendance have been down, but before COVID, we were averaging about 15 in, in attendance. And uh, currently, my family and I, we are working on our church building, and uh, we live in the church building at this time, but my family and I were uh, closing on a house on October 23rd, so I appreciate if you pray for us about that. Thank you. He walked along the shores of Galilee From clay he formed the healing balm That caused the blind to see When stones of wrath weighed heavy in their hands He knelt to write his mercy in the sand Jesus came to set the captives free Showed us by the way show them love just to say we care will never be enough how can we reach a world we never touch could we be so busy being saved trying to impress a world that's long since lost its way we pride ourselves in being set apart yet we don't take time to touch a broken heart even if we found the time to care would we take the risk involved in always being there oh we hold the very thing they need so much sometimes the word of god can pass through just a simple touch how can we reach a world we never touch If we never show them love, just to say we care will never be enough. How can we reach a world we never touch? We hide behind these walls and the security of friends, while beyond the stained glass windows, the world is lost in sin. Can we reach a world we never touch? How can we show them Christ if we never show them love? Just to say we care will never be enough. How can we reach a world we never touch? How can we reach a world we Touch. Open your Bibles and uh, turn to the book of Ephesians, chapter number three. I'll tell you a little bit about my history. I grew up here in Arlington. I uh, attended Trinity Baptist Church, and that was the church that uh, some soul winners came out, and they led my dad to the Lord when I was only eight months old, and I started going to church ever since there. And uh, I grew up just about two or three minutes from this church here, just down the road over there off of Kelly Elliott. And, um, and I'm thankful that y'all are here. I can't be here always, 
And I know I've uh, taken several tri trips back this year and I'm, I'm here now, but I can't stay here. I got to go back to the reservation and I'm thankful for churches in my hometown that are reaching people in this city. And I want to encourage you never to stop. If it wasn't for a soul winner coming by my parents' house, knocking on their door in their, in their apartment and, and witnessing to my dad, he probably never would have gotten saved. I, uh, I want to encourage you on missions as well. My wife, the reason she's saved is because missionaries went out to the reservation. They were from Texas and, and uh, they went out to the reservation and uh, her family members, some of her family members were saved. They didn't tell her, tell her how to go to heaven, but that missionary and that family that came out and uh, they shared with her the gospel and she accepted Jesus Christ. Never give up on missions. Never give up on soul winning. That is some of the most important things as a Christian that we can do. And the Bible encourages us. What did Jesus Christ come for? To seek and to save that which is lost. Hey, all Christ's ministry. He, he said in uh, John chapter number four, I must needs go through Samaria. Hey, he had an appointment in John chapter three with that man named Nicodemus. You remember that? Hey, that was something important to Jesus Christ. Everywhere he went. Hey, why did he go to the other side of the sea? And he uh, met with a maniac. There was only one guy that he was able to talk to there. It was one maniac. And uh, he didn't get to talk to anybody else there. He witnessed to that maniac. He saved that maniac. And then they, they kicked him out of the city. Was that one man worth it? Yes, he was worth it. And if you look throughout the, uh, uh, the uh, Gospels, you'll see that whenever the Lord came back to that city, he was received because of that maniac that got saved. Tonight, I'm going to be preaching on love plus favor equals blessings. Love plus favor equals blessings. Everybody wants the blessings of God. Everybody would say in this, in this uh, room this evening, I want God to bless me. And you'd be a fool if you didn't want the Lord to bless you. Everybody wants the Lord to bless them, even lost people. And they say, well, the Lord, I want him to bless me. But most of us, we stay in the love stage of our relationship with Jesus Christ, and we never take it any further to receive the blessings of God. Ephesians chapter 3, I'll begin here in verse number 16. The Bible says this, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to, the strengthen, uh, uh, to be strengthened with the mighty, uh, with might by his spirit in the inner man. Verse number 17, that Christ may dwell in, you, in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height? And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all fullness of God. Verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Let's pray for a second. Dear Heavenly Father, please come down and meet with us. I pray for the needs of this church. I pray for the pastor. I pray for my wife and the ones that are not here, here this evening. I pray that you would bring them back at another time and bless us this evening. I pray that you would give us something from your word. Put me aside and fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And the Bible says right here, it talks about the love of God in these verses. And uh, you see, God is a loving father who wants to bless his children. God's not a, a mean person that doesn't want to bless his children. He's not abusive to his children. God is a loving father who wants to bless his children. I have kids. Hey, there's no greater joy for me to be able to bless my children. I don't want to withhold blessings from them. I want to bless them. And that's what God does. That's what God desires each day is to bless his children. Not only that, God is able to bless, the Bible says in these verses, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Hey, more, more than you can even think, more than you can even imagine, God wants to bless you exceeding abundantly. Don't you love the words that uh, Paul used right here? Hey, it wasn't just God is able to bless you more than you can think. No, it's exceeding abundantly. That's a, a very elaborate words that he used in this passage of scripture. He's not exaggerating one bit. He's saying God is able to do that. He's able to, and he wants to do that. Exceeding abundantly all above all that we ask or think. Not only that, God gives us some blessings that are unconditional. 
Hey, you were born into this world. Did you do anything to be born into the world? No, he gave us life and that was unconditional. You didn't do anything to deserve that. Hey, if you got saved, you know what grace is? You receive Jesus Christ through, through uh, faith and grace. You know what grace is? Grace is unmerited favor from God. Hey, you didn't deserve grace. Hey, nobody deserved grace. But you see, the Lord gave us grace and he gave us favor. But you see, that grace, it was guided and brought about by love. But that's some of the only things that God gives us for free. Hey, God doesn't give us everything for free. God doesn't bless us when we don't do right. Hey, do I bless my children when they do wrong? If they, if they disobey me, if they're disobedient children, do I say, hey, I'm glad you're disobedient. Let me reward you for your disobedience. Hey, God is a loving father just as I love my children and I desire to bless my children. And God's the same way. He's no different. He's even better than we are. Hey, he wants to bless us, but he's not going to bless us if we don't have his favor. You see, blessings only come when we receive the favor of God. That's why in the title of the message, love plus favor equals blessings. Point number one, I want to focus here this evening on the love of God. Look at 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. And many preachers and many pastors, they'll focus and they'll, they'll have messages on the love of God. And, and I've done it before in the past. And I can go the whole evening on just the love of God. And even songwriters, we sung about it. And we sing about it in our hymns. Hey, isn't the love of God something wonderful? We sing amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And we talk about the love of God. But you see, look at 1 John chapter 4 and verse number 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Hey, you and I, we could love one another and we can love God, but it's not something that we are. Jesus Christ, God, he is love. That's not just one of his attributes. That is who he is. Who is God? He's love. He's love. Hey, if you don't have Jesus Christ this evening, you can't know love. The world, hey, they have a form of love. It's called lust. You know what lust says? Lust says, what can I get from you? Love says, what can I give you? What can I give you? And that's what God did for us. God is love. Look at verse number 19. He says right here, 1 John chapter 4, verse number 19, we love him because he first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. Hey, we didn't even know what love was until God loved us. Hey, we couldn't love one another if we didn't have the love of God. And in 1 John chapter 4, uh, the, the writer here, he explains about the love of God and how you and I, we should love one another. But hey, if we don't have the love of Jesus Christ, we don't know what love is. Hey, how can I, just like the song said on the video, how can I tell the world and tell these people that are lost, how can I show them Jesus Christ if I don't have love in my heart? You got to have love. And Jesus Christ, he is love. God is love. Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 19. We just read this verse right here. This verse talks about the love of God. And it's interesting how the, how the verse describes the love of God to us here in Ephesians chapter number 3. Look at it again, if you will, in verse number 19. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. It passeth knowledge. You know what that means? You can't understand it. It's, it's unexplainable, if you will. You can't understand the love of God. If you sat down and tried the love of God, hey, did God create Adam and Eve knowing that they were going to fall? And yet he did it anyways. Hey, Jesus Christ is the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. He created men knowing that they were going to sin, knowing that he was going to have to send his only begotten son to die on the cross for their sins. And yet he did it, did it anyways. You know what that is? That's unexplainable love. Hey, if I was God... I would have done it differently, don't you think? I would have said, no, that's probably not how I'm going to operate. I'm going to do it just a little bit differently to make sure that they don't mess up and they don't fall. But you see, God, God is love. His love is unexplainable. You can't explain it. Look at Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 35. Romans chapter 8, verse number 35. <clears throat> not only is the love of God unexplainable, it is something that is unconditional. 
unconditional. Romans chapter 8, look at verse number 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any cre- other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Hey, the love of God, there's nothing that can change the love of God for you. Hey, it's unconditional. Aren't you grateful that the love of God is unconditional? Hey, you remember that time when Jesus Christ was in the Garden of Gethsemane and Judas came to him and he, and he gave the kiss of betrayal on his cheek and he said, what did Jesus Christ say to him? He said, friend, That bothered me for a little while until I looked at it and I wondered, why God would you call him friend when he's kissing you and betraying you for 30 pieces of silver? He's kissing you and he's going to betray you. He says, why, Lord? Why would you do that? Then I realized it wasn't because Judas was Jesus' friend. It was because Jesus was Judas' friend. Hey, he was his friend no matter what. You know what that is? That's love. That's love. You have somebody betray you and you're still their friend? That's love. And that's what Jesus Christ did for Judas. Hey, he lost. He lost the best friend that he ever had. He betrayed the best friend that he ever had, Jesus Christ. It's unconditional. Not only that, the love of God, it's a sacrificial love. You know, John chapter 3, verse number 16. For God so loved the world that he gave. Hey, love, it's not what can I get from you. I already said it earlier. It's not what can I get from you, but what can I give you? What can I do for you? God, it's it's, uh, something that that he does. He sacrificed for us. He sacrificed his only child. Hey, no man took the life of Jesus Christ. He gave it for you and I. Why? I don't know. I can't explain it. Because he loves us. Because he loves us. He gave it to us. It was unconditional. It was a sacrificial love. Look at uh, John chapter 15 and verse number 13. John chapter 15 and verse number 13. He says right here, greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Not only that, he takes it a step further in verse number 14. 14. Ye are my friends. How? Why? How are you the Lord's friends? If you do whatsoever I command you. Hey, God has shown his love toward us. He gave his life for us. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. God laid down his life for you and I. Jesus Christ laid down his life for you and I. He showed his love to us. Now, he says, take it a step further. You show your love back to Jesus Christ by obeying him. You're my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. If. That word if, it's a big word, isn't it? If. Hey, God loves us unconditional. God loves us when we don't love him back. God loves us no matter what, because that's true love. But he says, if. You love me. Keep my commandments. The love of God. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. The love of God should motivate us to receive his favor. The love of God should motivate us to receive his favor. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 14. The Bible says right here, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Hey, Paul is writing to the Corinthians right here, and he's saying the reason that he is an ambassador for Jesus Christ, the reason he tells people how they could go to heaven, the reason that he lives for Christ is because the love of Christ constraineth him. Hey, it, it forces him in a way, not, not physically, but he, he, he remembers the love of Christ and, and he, he studies the love of Christ and he thinks about the love of Christ and he, and he tries, he, the, the love of Christ forces him, if you will, to do what he does as a Christian. And the love of Christ should constrain us to receive his favor. 
Hey, a lot of people in the world, they know God loves them. Hey, they know the verse, John, John 3, 16, for God to love the world. And they know that, and they love that verse, and they know that God is love. But they never take it a step further. They never say, I know you love me. Now let me show that I love you. And it's sad to say that even Christians in churches like this here don't show that you love God. You say, yes, I love God. Hey, don't tell me you love God. Show me you love God. Hey, don't tell God that you love him. Show him that you love him. Hey, if you told your wife, hey, I love you, but you never showed it. Hey, she's going to have some doubts, don't you think? If you told your husband, I love you, but you never showed it. You never showed any affection. Hey, he would have some doubts, don't you think? Hey, your children, if you said, I love you, children, but you never wanted to spend any time with them, I think they would have some doubts, don't you think? Hey, because you have to show that you love them. And same way with kids and parents. If the kids say, hey, I love you, Dad, but they never want to spend any time with you, you scratch your head and you think, well, I don't know, maybe you don't love me because you don't have my favor. Right here, uh, we need the Lord's favor. We need the Lord's favor. There's many people in the Bible, many examples of people that had God's favor. You remember Joseph? You know what he had? He had God's favor. Yeah, he went through hard time, times in his life. And having the favor of God doesn't mean that you're not going to go through hard times. But he's there and he's with you through those hard times. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Hey, all throughout Joseph's life, Jesus Christ was there. And Joseph, everywhere he went, not only did he have God's favor, the Bible says that he had favor with man. You remember he had favor with his father. He had favor with Potiphar. He had fa- you know, favor with the keeper of the prison. He had favor everywhere he went. He became second in command of all of Egypt. Why? Because he had favor of God, and then God gave him favor with man. You remember Jesus Christ when he was just a little boy? The Bible says that he increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and man. God and man. Favor with God and man. He's our example. And if he increased in favor with God, how much more do you and I each day want to or need to increase in favor with God? Hey, I want God's favor in my life. I need God's favor. Why? Because the love of Christ constraineth me to get his favor. He loves me so much. He's done so much for me. I want to be in his favor. David said it like this. Lord, keep me as the apple of thine eye. The the apple of thine eye. Hey, that's what David's desire was, to have favor with God. Not only that, look here at Proverbs chapter number 8, verse number 33. Proverbs chapter number 8, and verse number 33. The favor of God comes when you receive instruction and wisdom. Instruction and wisdom. Proverbs chapter 8. Look here at verse number 33. The Bible says this. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of, the, of my doors. For, whosoever, or for whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. Wisdom and instruction brings favor of the Lord. Hey, God don't have favor for fools. He keeps it for the people that are wise. He doesn't just give it out to anybody that that disobeys his commandments. He looks down at those ones that are reading their Bible, that are praying, that are doing right, that are soul winning, that are giving the missions, that are giving their tithes, that are singing, that are doing what the Lord tells them to do. And he says, here, I give you my favor. Hey, Joseph, he had favor of his father, not just because he was the the uh, uh, child of his old age, but I believe because he was an obedient child. You and I, we need favor of the Lord. We need to be obedient to the Lord to receive that favor. Wisdom and instruction. Not only that, look at 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 15. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. You know what that word approval is? You know what that, that's talking about right there? Having God's approval? That's having God's favor. How are you going to receive God's favor if you don't want to have anything to do with this book right here? So I don't, I don't want to read that book. It's, it's archaic and the words in there are, are outdated and, and I can't understand. Hey, get a dictionary for, for, it's cheap. I mean, download it on your phone for free. Come on, people. Get a dictionary. So many people, they say, oh, I don't understand that, but I don't understand the NIV. 
I don't understand all the other versions I'm not going to go through this evening. I understand this book right here and the words that I can't understand. I get a dictionary and I look it up in the dictionary. But you see, if you say, I don't want to have anything to do with this book, hey, this is God's love letter to us. How did you know? How did you learn about the love of God? How did you learn about the love of Christ? It was through this book right here, or somebody opened this book and told you for God to love the world. It's because of this book right here. God wrote us a love letter. How can we show that we love him back by rejecting the love letter? He says, oh, I love you, God. He says, read my letter. Hey, whenever I was uh, courting my wife, I was in Bible college. You know what she would do? She would write me letters. You know what I would do? I'd read those letters. I would read them. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't just read them one time. I said, I read it once. I'm done with that thing. Forget that anymore. I read it once. No, I'd read it twice. She, she thinks of me. How? Wow, look at my muscles. Ooh, and ooh, smells like perfume. Hey, I would read that love letter. I'd read it. Hey, I wouldn't just read it once. I'd read it over and over and over again until she gave me a new one. Hey, God has given this book right here. We want his favor, but we're not showing that we love him back by reading it. Most people in churches, in the pews, don't read their Bible. I've even heard of pastors get up and admit, hey, the only time they read their Bible is to get messages. That's not how it is. That's not how it should be. Hey, read the Bible, love the Bible, love this book. This book is the love letter that God has given us. If we don't show our favor by reading it, we're not going to receive his blessings. Next, Proverbs chapter number three. Proverbs chapter number three. In verse number one, my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find, what's that next word? Favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Hey, you want good favor with God? Hey, you want to be on God's good side? Don't you want to be one of his favorite children? Hey, I'm one of God's favorite children. I Hey, I want to be God's favorite child, don't you? Hey, all throughout the Bible, you'll find people like Moses and Abraham, friends of God, people that wanted to be, hey, they didn't want to just have a, a well, I know God, I know I'm going to heaven when I die. Hey, they wanted to have an intimate relationship with God, and they wanted to have His favor and blessings on their life. And they sought after it. It was their heart's desire. You see, the Bible says right here, uh, the favor of God comes from keeping His commandments. He says, if you love me, Keep my commandments. You love God? Keep his commandments. Keep his commandments. When my children tell me, hey, I love you, Dad, I say, obey me. Obey me. Hey, I'm not, I'm not a hard person to get along with. I'm not a mean person to my children. Hey, I don't put uh, uh, really strong restrictions on my children. I love my children. And God's the same way. He doesn't, he doesn't give us anything that we can't handle. He doesn't put things hard on us. He says, hey, learn of me. He says, my burdens are light. My, my way is easy. He wants life to be easy for you and grand. He wants the best for your life. But you got to seek his favor. Not only that, look at John chapter number 15. John chapter 15. And I got a little bit ahead of myself here. I've already mentioned this verse, but we'll read it again anyways. John chapter 15, look at uh, verse number 9 starting out here. He says right here, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Verse number 14, Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Hey, do you love God? Obey God. Isn't that easy? I'm not preaching anything strange or new or different or against this Bible right here. Hey, it's this basic Christianity, but so many times it's the basic things that we forget to do in Christianity. We say, hey, I love God. I go to church. Hey, show me in the Bible. Does it say just because you go to church, you love God? Hey, I grew up in church all my life. I'm over 30 years old. I grew up in church. I was in church over 30 years, and I've seen people come and go that sat in pews like this that did not love God. Their heart was far from him. And yet they said in pews, just because you come to church doesn't mean you love God. Keep his commandments. 
It's a reciprocated love, showing that you love him back. Have you ever seen somebody, maybe a a man or a woman, a man loves a woman and, and she doesn't show that love back? Isn't that the saddest love story whenever you see somebody who, or maybe, maybe it's a, a mother or a father that loves their children and wants the best for their child and their child rejects that, that parent and turns their back on them. And hey, you know what? That's the saddest thing. But how many times do we do that to God? He says, I love you. I've proved it on the cross. Look at my nail prints in my hands. Hey, I've proved it to you over and over again. I've given you life. I've given you blessings. I've proved my love to you. Now keep my commandments reciprocate the love that God has given us. Don't just be settled and don't just settle with the love that God has given us. Give that love back to him and try to receive his favor. Look next here at the last uh, point, uh, number three, the blessings of God. The blessings of God, look at Philippians chapter number 14. Uh, Philippians chapter number four, excuse me. Philippians chapter number four. And if you can find chapter 14, I'll give you $20 after church. It's not in there. Philippians chapter number 4. Look at verse number, uh, we'll start here in verse number 15. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning, uh, excuse me, pause right there. Look at verse number 19. But my God shall supply all your needs, uh, all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Hey, I hear a lot of people and I hear a lot of good pastors. They'll get up and say, God has promised in his word. Philippians chapter four, verse number 19 to supply all your needs. And people sitting in the pew, they say, I see that you, God said he's going to supply all my needs and they want the blessings of God. They say, God, please bless me and supply all my needs. And there's something that doesn't happen for them. Hey, their light bill doesn't get paid or their rent is due and they don't have the money. And they ask God, Lord, I went to church. I prayed. You said you were going to supply all my needs and you didn't supply all my needs. Hey, look at the context of the scripture. You can't just take a verse out of context and run with it. Hey, that's how denominations are started, by taking verses, misreading verses and misrepresenting verses out of context. Hey, look here at verse number uh, 15 that we were trying to read earlier. He says, Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that might abound to your account. But I have all and abound, and am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. This church right here, the Philippian church, poorest church ever. Poorest church. Hey, they didn't have a lot of money, but they sent once and again to Paul's needs. And Paul is telling them, because you sent to my needs, Paul, the greatest missionary that ever lived, he said, hey, because you sent to my needs as a missionary, my God shall supply your needs. Hey, you have needs? Hey, your church has needs? Hey, my church, my congregation, I told you how many were running. We were running about 15 before COVID. But you see, you know what? We support three missionaries. Three missionaries. Why? Not because we have a lot of money. Not because we have excess money that we just want to give away. Hey, because I want God's blessing and I want God to take care of my needs. Hey, we don't even have a a running water or electricity at our church just yet. But you know what we do? We support missions. Why? Because we want God's blessings. Hey, without his favor. Hey, we got his love. That was unconditional. Hey, we got his love, but we want his favor so we could receive his blessings. Not only that, the blessings of God. I said the blessings of God of supplying our needs is only achieved by giving to missions. Look here at Mark chapter number six. Mark chapter number six. The blessings of God. Everybody wants to see God bless them. Everybody wants the Lord's blessings. You have to receive his favor. You see, the blessings of God taking care of us is received when we seek his kingdom and his righteousness. Mark chapter number six, verse number 30. He tells us right here. He says, and the apostles uh, gathered themselves together unto Jesus. I got this verse wrong, but uh, the verse is this. 
Uh, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What things shall be added unto you? Hey, he talks about in the verses prior to that. He says, hey, food and raiment. He says, don't seek after food. Don't seek after raiment. But you see all the Gentiles, that's what they seek after. He says, don't worry about those things because, hey, you know what? The lily of the field, God clothes the lily of the field. God takes care of the lily of the field. Hey, he said, it's, it's arrayed better than even Solomon was arrayed in all his glory. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Everybody says, hey, I want God to add these needs that I have, food and raiment and and all these needs that I have. He says, seek seek his kingdom first and seek his righteousness first. He says, he'll add that unto you. Next, the blessings of God. Look at Malachi chapter number three. Malachi chapter three. Oh, I know that he was going to get on tithing. I knew he was going to get on it. Hey, I'm a missionary. That's what I'm, that's what I'm paid to do, right? Get on tithing a little bit. But isn't it important to tithe? Hey, all throughout the scripture, you'll see in the, in the very book, first book of the Bible, Genesis, Abraham paid tithe. He, get, he paid tithe the, the priest Melchizedek. Hey, all throughout the Bible, the Lord talks about giving. Malachi chapter three and verse number 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall be uh, shall not be room enough to receive it. Verse number 11, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast forth her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Hey, you know what you should do? You should give your tithes and offerings so that the Lord can open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Hey, everybody this evening would say, Lord, please open the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing. I need a blessing this evening. Hey, he says, give your tithes and offerings. It's contingent on receiving his favor. Give your tithes and offerings. Hey, I like that verse number 12, verse number 11. He talks about rebuking the devourer for your sake. Hey, don't you want to give the devil a kick in the head? Devil ever did anything wrong to you? Hey, devil ever treated you bad? Hey, you want to beat the devil up? Give your tithes and offerings. He says, I'm going to rebuke the devourer for your sake. You know what? Whenever you give your tithes and offerings, you know what the devil says? Hey, get away, devil. Leave those people alone right there. They gave their tithes and offerings. Leave them alone and rebuke them for your sake. And that's a blessing that you could receive when you receive the favor of God. Most people never get past the love of God stage. The love of God, and they sing about it. They love singing about the love of God, and they love, oh, just tell me about the love of God. And you hear people like Joel Osteen on the TV. He's talking, oh, the love of God. Oh, God loves everybody. God is love, and he's smiling all the time. Hey, God is love. But if you only had on a battery, if you only had just a positive side to that battery, what would happen without the negative? Hey, God is love, but God also is a consuming fire. Hey, God is angry with the wicked every day. He doesn't, God doesn't just come up uh, every day and say, hey, I love the wicked. No, God is angry with the wicked every day. God is love. Hey, it means more to you when you understand who God is. If you take the positive and the negative, not that God has any negative, but to us, hey, anger and, and all these things that the Lord is, Hey, it seems negative to us, but hey, that shows that God loves us and we can receive God's love. Hey, it means more to us when we receive it. The love of God. Most people never get past the love of God's stage. They never seek his favor. Therefore, they receive very little blessings. And they're alive. You know, maybe they got saved, but that's where they stay. You ask somebody, hey, what does God do for you? Hey, what has God done for you lately? There was a guy in the video. His name is Jimmy Stevens. He's... um. Not really my dad, but he grew up here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and he's out there on the mission field. He's helping us in our church. You know what he does? Hey, tell me what God's done for you. Tell me. He walks up to random people. Tell me what God's done for you. And people, they scratch your head. 
Um, I'm not sure. Mm, what did God do for me? He's, are you alive? Did you, are you saved? He's, he has to pry it out of people. Hey, if somebody walked up to you and said, hey, tell me what God's done for you lately, you should be able to say, hey, this is what God's done for me. He's blessed me here and he blessed me there. Why? Because you're living in his favor. Those people that don't have an answer, hey, they received the love of God, but they've stopped there in their Christianity. They've never sought after his favor. Therefore, they were never received blessings from him. After that, most people want blessings from God, but don't love them enough to seek his favor. If you love me, keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. We should seek his favor, not just for the blessings, not just to say, hey, I want the Lord to bless me, so I'm going to seek his favor. We should seek his favor all the way back to 2 Corinthians. Remember we said the verse, uh, the love of Christ constraineth us. We love him because he first loved us. And why do you love God? Why should we seek his favor? Not just to receive blessings, but it is a byproduct from seeking his favor. Love plus favor equals blessing. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Lord, I pray for each one of us in here that not only would we receive your love, but we would reciprocate that love back to you by serving you by presenting our bodies a living sacrifice, by reading your word, by studying it, Lord, by soul winning, by, by going to church and all these things that we can do that you tell us in your word that we ought to do, Lord. Lord, I pray for us to do your will and that we become better Christians for you, that we would tell more people about Jesus Christ, that we would give more in our tithes and offerings, that we would give more to missions, that we would do more for Christ in these upcoming days that we have. And Lord, I pray for your quick return. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Father Mike Kenny, close our service in a word of prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this time to come to your house, Lord, to learn from your word. Lord, the love you give is awesome. We love you. We thank you for all the blessings in our life. Lord, we pray that you would help us to always seek your favor, to be in your favor. Thank you for uh, Brother Barnett, Lord, and his ministry. We pray that you'd watch over him as they travel, and uh, Lord, help them to reach uh, the Indians in the Navajo Nation. Lord, we just praise you and thank you for all that you do. Be with those that are not feeling well and sick. Lord, that you watch over them as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.